This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Say that after me. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Well, thank you so much for joining us for Center for I Am. We are doing a series of studies on what is the gospel. Do you know that the gospel is good news? The gospel is the good news of Jesus Christ, the good news of victory, the good news of prosperity. And we're studying the five facets of the gospel because many people think the gospel is just going to heaven. Well, the gospel does mean you have an eternal home, you're eternally secured with God, but the gospel is so much more. The gospel means we can have heaven on earth. Well, I'm about to get into the teaching, but let's worship God here and uh, we'll come right back and get into the Word of God. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, 
Thank you so much for joining us and engaging in worship with us. Now let's move into the Word of God. Father, we believe you for the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of understanding to prevail. Teach us what the gospel is in Jesus' name. Amen. We are studying what is the gospel, and we are doing a systematic walk through the gospel. And, and here's the reason I'm doing this. God loves you, and God wants you healthy. God wants you prosperous. God wants you blessed. God wants you to live at peace. God wants your family to live in harmony. God is a good God. Well, if God is a good God, why are so many terrible things happening in my life? Why are th so many things uh, happening in uh, the planet that are just not good? You look around everywhere and you just see uh, craziness. And it's not imaginary craziness. It's real craziness. Well, we live in times. First of all, I believe we're transitioning into a new wave now, when I say a new wave, I'm talking about a new flow of energy. Now, what many people have not understood is how energy operates in the planet. Now, let's talk about energy just a little bit. Everything, first of all, is energy. We'll get to 2 Corinthians 4.4 4 in a minute. Everything is energy. I have here these reading glasses, and I use them once in a while. These glasses are really energy. If you were to put these glasses under a microscope, a powerful enough microscope, you wouldn't see the glasses. You would actually see energy. I have here a Bible. And this Bible is a book made out of paper and um, leather. If you were to put the Bible under a powerful enough microscope, uh, you would see energy. Now, the interesting thing about a Bible is this. I travel a lot. And once in a while, I'll have a Bible in my bag, and that Bible will set off that uh, alarm in the airport every time. <laughs> and I've had people say, I don't know why, but that Bible just tends to make the uh, metal detector go off because it's loaded with divine energy, okay? Now, scientifically, I don't know why, but it does make that, that go off, off so, or go off, or, um, and they always let you through because they figure if you have a Bible, you must be a good guy, you know? They'll, they'll check out, they'll still check you out. But anyway, what are we saying? Everything is energy. So what we're really dealing with is energy management. The sociologists have studied human society, and they believe we will go through four waves. The first wave we went through was the agricultural wave. When I say we, I'm talking about humanity. The second wave, the industrial wave. You notice we went from being an agrarian agricultural nation to an, an, uh, uh, to an agricultural nation, from an agricultural nation to an industrial nation. Now, for some reason, when I think about going all the way back to agriculture, I think of even, well, Adam and Eve, the beginning. And then eventually man start, started to mechanize or make machines of everything, you know, uh, machine power, tractors, trucks, the automobile, and so on. So the industrial age, and then we move from the industrial age. Is this okay? We'll, we'll get into the teaching in a little bit. Just share a little backdrop into what we call the information age. And here's where we are now, information IT, information technology. Information is moving so quickly. You can send a message by email around the world in just a matter of seconds, all right? Now, we are moving into the next age or the fourth wave, whether you call it an age or not, that sociologists believe will be an age of enlightenment. Do you notice that there's a lot of talk about enlightenment? More people are interested in meditation, affirmations, visualizations. In fact, it's led many people to religions other than Christianity because Christianity has just been preaching charge, God, Holy Ghost. When people are saying, I, I want to learn how to meditate. I want to learn some people how to levitate. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm not saying you need to learn how to levitate. Keep your feet on the ground. <laughs> Get your feet back on the ground, like Tower of Power say. But people are moving into uh, affirmations, and some people are calling it New Age. And I believe it's an enlightenment of the spirit. Now, of course, you can move into false religions with these things, but imagination, visualization, affirmation, meditation are all biblical principles. I believe that in this fourth wave, not only will we move into enlightenment, but we will move into the power of the spirit. The, because people are seeking the powers of the world's to come, the powers of the invisible, the power of God. People are really wanting to know God, but they don't know that. They, they just think, I don't want anything to do with God. I just want to meditate. Well, God's word said, if you meditate in a day and night, you'll make your way prosperous. You'll have good success. I don't want anything to do with God. I just want to be more positive. God's word says, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, it'll happen. How much more positive can you be? God's word says that God's name is I am. You want to be positive? See, all the things we're looking for in this wave are in God. Does that make sense? And it's all in God because it's in the good news. Now, all of that was just me sharing from the heart what I see happening in the planet. Now, our message today is what is the gospel. So let's touch on this next facet of the gospel. 2 Corinthians 4.4. 4. Did you find that? It says, in whom the God of this world, or the Greek says God of this age, has blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. So notice it's called the glorious gospel of Christ. We are saying the gospel is good news. Why is the gospel good news? Because the gospel covers the five facets that are critical to you living a fruitful life. And I give those to you as five S words. The first S is sin. We are forgiven of our sins. Our sins are wiped out. God moves our sins away from us as far as the east is from the west. Number two, spirit. We are filled with the spirit of God. The gospel means God has sent his spirit to live within us. Number three, security. The Lord is our shepherd. The Lord is our banner. The Lord is our victory. Number four, soundness. We can walk in divine health. Now I'll come back and talk about that in just a moment. And number five, success. The gospel means prosperity. Now, the interesting thing is that the five S's parallel with the names of God, the redemptive names of God. For instance, Jehovah Sidkenu means the Lord our righteousness. Righteousness delivers you from sin. Jehovah Makedesh means the Lord our sanctifier. Well, if you're sanctified, you're sanctified from the evils of this present world. Do you see that? Well, Jehovah Shalom means our peace. If you have peace, you're filled with the spirit. Jehovah Shammah means God is present. If God is present, his spirit is within you. And you can then say, greater is he that is in me than he that's in the world. So you got Jehovah Roi which means the Lord our shepherd. That means you are safe, secured, protected, and you have Jehovah Nisi, the God, your banner, the God, your victory. The, the banner over us is love, and love never fails. So that means you're victorious because you are secure, you are kept, and you have eternal security through Jesus Christ coming back to set up his millennial kingdom and taking us to heaven and living forever and ever in the new heaven and the new earth. The gospel is good news. <laughs> all right, but that's not all. And then you got S, which is soundness, which is health, which we'll talk about in a moment. And finally, uh, S for success, which is prosperity. And we are redeemed from the curse of the law. Now, let's talk about this soundness S today. God said in Exodus 15, 26, I am the Lord that healeth thee. 
I am the Lord that heals thee. I am the Lord who heals you, we would say. I use the King James quite a bit, so I speak in Elizabethan English sometimes. <laughs> I am the Lord who heals you, or I am the Lord your healer. Now, the interesting thing about I am is this. Whatever you say after I am, you shape, you create, you form in your life. That's why we call our teaching center the Center for I Am. We want to bring I am awareness to people. In fact, we're marrying this thing. People that are looking for the practical, uh, not, not necessarily mystical. I don't believe in uh, mystical. A lot of people use that word and I understand. We even call certain teachers mystics. But we are apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers. I tend to stick with the biblical words, all right? So no put down to you if you like using that word mystic. I know different people in different religions do. But we are practical teachers of the truth here. Now, when you say the words, I am, whatever you say after is created in your life. So say, I am healed. Come on, say it again. I am healed. Now say, I am healthy. Come on, say it again. I am healthy. The key to your health is right here, your tongue. <laughs> the key to your health that is in your mouth. There is a miracle in your mouth. Scripture says in Psalm 107, 20, he sent his word and healed them. How did God heal? Words. He sent his word and healed them. Now, the interesting thing is, he didn't say, I sent my word to heal. He said, he sent his word and heal. Now, meaning this, if he sent the word to heal, that means the word was sent to do something and the word might do it and the word might not. But he sent his word and heal means he sent the word and the word did what the word was sent to do because the word is I am. Whatever you say after I am is created in your life. So say again, I am healed. I want you to start saying that every day. When you wake up, first thing, I am healed. I am healthy. I am healed. I am healthy. Now you're releasing I am. You're releasing the power of I am. And you're following I am with health. You know why so many people are sick? Because they're saying, I am sick. I am just so sick. I am just so weak. I am just... Oh, I am just coming down with a headache. I am coming down with cancer. I am coming down with the flu. See, you're using your I am in a negative. Now, why can you say you should use your I am in a positive? Because we have a book called the Bible that says God is the great I am, and I am is the healer. And I am, Jehovah Rapha means I am the, it really means I am the one who is your healer get that. I am the one who is your healer. So who is your healer? God. Say after me, God is my healer. Now, no matter what condition you face, no matter what physical circumstance you face, you can be healed. You can be healed. You can be healed. In fact, you are healed already. I woke up the other night and in the morning, early in the wee hours of the morning, the first thing that jumped in my spirit was now. This is a now gospel. Now, see, when you start saying, I am healed, you release power. If you say, I'm hoping that the Lord heals me. I'm praying for the Lord to heal me. That's not faith. See, faith is always now. We don't have time to do an in-depth study of faith, but boy, you need to study faith. You need to get my program, 40 Days of Faith. You can get it at Amazon.com. Because when you understand, I am healed, that'll keep you strong. But if you say, well, I am going to the doctor to see what the doctor says. Well, there's an old song we used to sing years ago, whose report will you believe? Guess what? The doctor's probably going to find something wrong. <laughs> but you are healed. Say, I am healed. I am sound. I am healthy. I am vibrant. I am well. There's a lot of talk about wellness today. Well, wellness is a part of the gospel because the S we talked about today is soundness. God is 
your soundness. Lord, you sent your word and healed us. Help people all over the world to receive the word of healing right now in Jesus' name. Well, thank you so much for tuning in today. Go to our website, which is center, C-E-N-T-R-E-4-I-M dot com, and make a rich donation. If we feed you, help us to feed more people. Help us to take this glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, around the world. And I decree, as you give, it is given unto you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Now, I can't wait to get into the next S, but that comes in our next teaching, which is success. He is the Lord, our success. So we're going to show you how to say, I am successful, and to enjoy the financial and material prosperity of God like never before. Folks, you are about to manifest money. You need to join me. All right. Visit us on the World Wide Web at Center, C-E-N-T-R-E-4-I-M.com. And may the great I am, the one, expand your life until your destiny is fulfilled. Remember, keep saying, I am healed. Make it a great day.